Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief. All the AI headline news you need in five-ish minutes or less. Quick note before we dive in, remember you can get this via newsletter every morning at the AIbreakdown.beehive.com or go to breakdown.network to sign up as well. We begin with a not-so-announced announcement from OpenAI that it has quietly shut down its AI detection tool due to that tool not being very accurate. The news was reported yesterday by Decrypt and says that while in January, OpenAI announced its AI classifier tool, which was designed to detect whether some piece of writing had been created using a tool like ChatGPT, that last week it quietly pulled the plug. Now, as Decrypt pointed out, this was not announced in some big tweet or anything like that, or even a new blog post. Instead, it was added as an addendum to the original blog post. The addendum reads... As of July 20th, 2023, the AI classifier is no longer available due to its low rate of accuracy. We are working to incorporate feedback and are currently researching more effective provenance techniques for text and have made a commitment to develop and deploy mechanisms that enable users to understand if audio or visual content is AI generated. Now, to be fair to OpenAI, even when they announced this tool, they were very clear that it was not necessarily production ready. In that original post, they wrote, our classifier is not fully reliable. In our evaluations on a challenge set of English texts, our classifier correctly identified 26% of AI written text, i.e. true positives, as likely AI written, while incorrectly labeling human written text as AI written 9% of the time. False positives. Now, while it's sad that OpenAI hasn't cracked the code here, I believe it would be definitely more harmful to leave available a tool that isn't accurate than to actually go out and try to solve the problem. The reality of the situation is that right now, these detectors just aren't reliable. And the sort of false positives that wrongly accuse people of using generative AI to write materials can be incredibly damaging. In May, a Texas professor made national news when he asked ChatGPT if his students' papers were written by AI, which ChatGPT said that they were, ultimately leading that professor to fail basically his entire class, even though ChatGPT was inaccurate, and the class hadn't actually used AI in these final papers. Anyways, for now, OpenAI's attempt at this effort have gone back to the drawing board. Next up today, it is no secret that AI mania has kept the stock market growing even as other counterweights have tried to drag it back down. Now, however, there is a growing chorus of analysts that are worried that the big price tag associated with stocks like NVIDIA is a bubble that might ultimately burst and bring the stock market down with it. An analyst note from Monday, written by a group led by J.P. Morgan's chief market strategist, said that the rally has been indicative of an AI-driven bubble, and that the hype was triggered by the, quote, popularization of chatbots that often fail in basic questions, rather than concrete evidence of AI-powered earnings growth. And so really, there's two things that J.P. Morgan is saying here. Actually, three. One, they seem a little skeptical of generative AI in general. Two, they are certainly skeptical of the disparity between AI hype and real impact on revenue that comes from AI. And third, and importantly, they think that markets are underestimating other broader factors. As a Forbes summary put it, JP Morgan predicted there will be broad market declines as the market reprices in the lingering impact of higher interest rates, an erosion of personal savings, and a deeply troubling geopolitical backdrop. Over in the policy world, AI remains firmly in the sights of the Biden administration. Secretary of State Antony Blinken wrote an op-ed in the Financial Times with Secretary of Commerce Gina Raimondo about how important it is for there to be global coordination on the issues surrounding artificial intelligence. Now, this comes surrounding a number of G7 meetings and clearly seems to be a little bit about flag planting rather than any particular policy that the U.S. is trying to push. Moving over into the research realm for a moment, there was a really interesting study that recently came out that suggested that as much as humans might express specific preferences when it comes to art, there are certain properties of art or pictures that can make it more or less universal, regardless of whether one subjectively likes it. The study was published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, and it comes from University of Chicago researchers who had 3,200 people view hundreds of images of art that was lesser known from the Art Institute of Chicago, and who were then later shown paintings that they had seen mixed in with ones they hadn't and asked whether they remembered them or not. According to the study, people were very consistent. The vast majority of people tended to remember or forget the same images. Then separately, using a deep learning neural network called ResMem, those same researchers were able to predict how likely each painting was to be memorable. As Wired describes it, quote, ResMem roughly mimics how the human visual system passes information from the retinas of the cortex, first processing basic information like edges, textures, and patterns, then scaling up to more abstract information like object meaning. Its memorability scores were very highly correlated with those given by people in the online experiment, even though the AI knew nothing about the cultural context, popularity, or significance of each artwork. And here's the kicker. 
These findings suggest that our memory for art has less to do with subjective experiences of beauty and personal meaning, and more to do with the artwork itself, which may have major implications for artists, advertisers, educators, and anyone hoping to make their content stick in your brain. Lastly today, one very cool one and something that I'm personally interested in. Many of you might not know that I lived in Egypt on and off for a period of about six years. And so I was super excited to see that the Egypt Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities is now using AI in partnership with radiological techniques to reconstruct ancient mummies. The team hopes that the process will be able to aid in restoration efforts, in many cases before those efforts even begin. That is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. If you enjoyed it and haven't done it yet, please do me a favor and go press the five-star rating on your podcast app where you listen. Those ratings make a big difference when people decide which podcasts they're going to listen to, and I appreciate each and every one of you who has taken the time to do that. Otherwise, thanks as always for listening, and I'll be back soon with the main AI breakdown.